Okay, today we're gonna learn about unit fractions. So there are a couple of new vocabulary words that you'll need to know. What a unit fraction is, what it means to compose, and what a sum of unit fractions is. So all of your words are right here in the glossary, but we're also gonna learn a little bit more about that. So the first thing you're gonna do is cut out your page and glue it on the next blank one. Make sure you keep the directions because we're gonna need to follow them. Okay, today we are gonna be looking at the parts. We just learned that a fraction is made up of parts and now we're gonna look at those parts. So let's say we have a whole. This right here represents one whole, the whole thing. Well, a whole could be broken into four parts. See right here where this whole has been broken into four parts? Each part is the unit fraction one fourth. So what we're gonna do is label each part with the unit fraction. One fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth. If we think back to the last lesson and we talked about how this fraction bar can be read out of, we can see that this is one out of four. One out of four. Now let's think of the word unit. You've heard that root word before in lots of different words like unicycle. What does unicycle mean? What about the game Uno? When you shout out Uno when you only have one card left? Well, unit just means one. So one piece out of the, all the pieces. The denominator always, always represents the number of parts in one whole. So our denominator isn't gonna change, but the unit is one, one out of four. So all unit fractions, every one of them, is going to have a numerator of one. All right. So now we kind of understand what a unit fraction is. It's just one of the parts. What we can do next is we can compose the unit fractions to create a whole. Now, what does that mean, compose? I've heard that word when I talk, when I hear about musicians composing songs. It just means putting together notes and lyrics to make a song. Compose means to put it together. So here, we're just using a little glue to put the pieces back together. When we compose the pieces back together and make the whole, we now have four fourths because one fourth and one fourth and one fourth and one fourth is four of them. We have four of them, we have four fourths. A lot of times we'll be asked to represent this as a sum of unit fractions. So here we have a model that's been broken into fourths and we have to represent it as a sum of unit fractions. Do you remember what sum means? It just means the answer to an addition problem. So we're gonna represent this as an answer to an addition problem. So here we have one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and we're adding those pieces together. And when we add those pieces together, it's going to equal four fourths and four-fourths is the whole thing. It's pretty easy. It doesn't matter how many pieces you have, you can still add them all up to equal the whole. So let's try it again. Here's a different situation. This time we have the same whole, but instead of being broke into four parts, this whole has been broken into eight parts. Each part is the unit fraction one-eighth. So every one of these is one eighth. So we can label them one eighth. This one's one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, and one eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all of these put together, if we compose them, we're gonna get the whole. Now let's look at this picture right here. We see something different happening. We see that some of the pieces have been composed and some of them are not composed. We only have these ones. But we can still represent this 
right here as a sum of unit fractions. Now remember, what's this unit fraction? One eighth, this one's one eighth, they're all one eighth. So we can represent it as a sum just by adding them up. So let's just do that down here. One eighth plus one eighth plus this one, one eighth plus this one, one eighth plus this one, one eighth. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So if we represent this piece right here, it's not going to represent eight eighths or one whole like we did with the fourths. That's because we didn't use them all. We only used some of them. We didn't use these three. So we just have to add them up. Well, if you have an eighth and an eighth and an eighth and an eighth and an eighth, how many eighths do you have? One, two, three, four, five. So we actually have five eighths. The denominator is still eight, and that's because the denominator always, always represents the number of parts in the whole thing. That number doesn't change. No matter how many of these have been glued together, there are still eight in the whole thing. So we can compose fractions, but we can also decompose fractions, and we'll learn about that later.